Welcome to ClickFunnels Radio, the podcast that brings you the latest strategies, insights, and success stories from online marketers just like you who utilize funnels to grow their business. Our mission is simple, to help you unleash the true potential of your online business by harnessing the power of funnels. Join us every week as we bring you exclusive interviews and thought-provoking discussions that will revolutionize the way you approach online marketing. Here are your hosts, Laura Demetrius and Chris Cameron. Welcome back to ClickFunnels Radio. My name is Chris Cameron and joined with me always is my awesome co-host, Laura Demetrius. What's up? Hello. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. Hey, I'm excited. I felt so bad because prior to Funnel Hacking Live, we had this guest scheduled. It's one of my favorite people. Like we've connected, gosh, for five years now and just kind of see each other. It's like boats kind of passing in the water and we have these cool little connections that happen from stand-up comedy to just speaking on stage to all sorts of things. But we had to reschedule this person because we had so much happening before Funnel Hacking Live. And this man actually spoke at Funnel Hacking Live. He's one of the only people that consistently gets to share the stage with Mr. Russell Brunson himself. As many of you know, I'm talking about Mr. Steve J. Larson, who is the original Capitalist Pig. He is a multi two comma club award winner. He's a dream car winner and an all around just champion in our community since day one. So I wanted to introduce and welcome Mr. Steve J. Larson. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be here. This is super exciting for me, Steve, because as you and I have talked kind of like about what we'd speak about today, a lot of people know your stories and, you know, you being involved in One Funnel Away and working with Russell initially and going back even farther to like, hey, I'm going to make it to Funnel Hacking Live. I'm going to trade funnels for tickets and for hotel rooms and all this to kind of where your business is now. It's, it's, it's quite different, but I want to lean into some of this. I mean, because I, what I love about ClickFunnels Radio is this is a place where we tell the stories a lot of times and then we get tactical too. Laura loves that part. And we jump in and really kind of dive into these funnels as well. But maybe if you could give us the Cliff Notes version, I know that's crazy of yeah. like, hey, here we are in 2023, Steve J. Larson, the capitalist pig, to like where it all began and how and why you're sitting here today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's I actually got on the internet because of door to door sales. Uh, I don't really tell that part too much, but I was a door to door sales guy selling pest control. And then one day, uh, I don't know. I, I was doing well, you know. I, I would sprint between doors, and uh, I was one of the top kind of newer salespeople. You seem and, like the guy that would sprint between doors. <laughs> like, oh, let's go, like, let's go. Let's do this, you know. <laughs> and so I was like running between doors, and and I remember one day though thinking like there has to be a way. I, I remember thinking this explicitly on the drive in the morning time. I'm with the rest of the sales crew, sales managers going to drop us all off in our neighborhoods, you know. And I remember looking up at the billboards. On the highway and thinking that i'm waking up every day going and knocking doors talking to people who are not planning on talking to me trying to convince them to buy something but the people who call these billboards are calling asking to be sold and i remember that thought hit me very hard and it's, it, it got me on this um track to go I was like, well, what if I started, there's, there's got to be of some pest control, right? So I was like, there's got to be people who are looking for pest control versus me just interrupting someone and trying to sell them. So I Inbound started pest control. Exactly. And that's exactly what I did. I went and I just started putting up on like free classified sites like Craigslist and different places. Hey, we'll do pest control for you. And my phone started ringing like crazy. And um, my manager was like, what are you doing? This is crazy because I was getting as many sales over the phone, people calling me in, thanking me while they bought me, bought for me um, versus, uh, you know, the same amount as I was selling on the doors. I was doubling my sales. And I was like, this is interesting. I got to learn how to like put more stuff out on the internet and get in front of people. And anyway, after the summer ended, I started getting in more like ebook writing. And um, that was really my first internet project. And uh, that's kind of where it started. I mean, from there, I got into affiliate marketing um, yeah. and uh, made my first dollar on the internet, truly, from the internet, from uh, affiliate marketing. And then started like, oh, started to become a traffic driver because I didn't know how to get traffic. That led me to work in, with Paul Mitchell schools um, while I was in my internet marketing classes. Is that why you have That's such amazing hair? <laughs> exactly right. They model my head. <laughs> that was back when the hair was on the other side of my head. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, 
it's just that's where it all started. And then I could get tons of traffic to these schools, but none of it would convert. And I literally Googled one day, how do you convert traffic? And that's when I ran into Russell Brunson. And um, and I started going really deep into the funnel game that way. And, uh, you know, everyone knows kind of the middle part of the story. Yeah, so. I, well, I mean, I may fast forward a little because I, I feel like we're on like the sequel or like three. Right. I don't want you as Spider-Man to have to tell your whole origin story again. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. We get it. Right. Which is yeah. awesome. And everybody knows that. And and there's plenty of places you can find this. I want to I want to bring up one moment, at least for me, um, watching Steve J. Larson like grow. OK, I remember it. I don't remember what year it was. It was probably tw- uh, 19, 2019 is my guess. Offer Mind, downtown Boise. Yeah. All right. And I remember Robbie Summers and I came and we brought a bunch of like OFA boxes and stuff. We were just there kind of to support and kind of, you know, uh, help. And I remember we were kind of cruising around with your sales team. And I remember you had sold this offer from stage. And I remember it being your first million dollar like day, like from stage. And and correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I remember you opening this envelope. And I don't think we've caught up on this. I remember you opening the envelope and looking at the number that your team gave you and you got emotional. So that's my side of the story. And to go, I'm like, oh my gosh, he did it. I want to hear your side of that story. Yeah, more happened actually uh, than just that. You know, I think what's interesting about entrepreneurship is you have to grow quickly and you have to be personally comfortable with feeling the ground move beneath your feet a lot, right? And so, mm-hmm. You are always learning a combination of skills as far as tactically, but you're also always learning an emotional intelligence as you keep learning yourself and re-meeting yourself because you're, you're, you're growing so fast. You, you just can't help it. And, um, and sometimes skills will outdo personal uh, capacity and vice versa, mm. right? And that, that day, so from stage, Yes, we got like, it was over a million dollars in commitment, but I was still new. I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't get a payment processor lined up. I couldn't run that money for six months. That's the other side of the story that I'm I'd like. Curious. Oh, I lost a million dollars. <laughs> I, I, wow. Over the next six months, it took, I, I started working with four different payment processors. But what do you think happens to the payment processor when someone comes in and says, hey, I got a million and a half dollars for you to come run almost immediately? Like they freak out. And so I went through this huge vetting thing and their lawyers were looking at my stuff and they're like, who are you? Why is this? Meanwhile, I'm self-funding fulfillment for the people that I sold. Oh my gosh. I didn't know this. Yeah. Almost no one does. I was going to go make a whole YouTube video on it. (laughs) You still should. Uh, Yeah, I'm totally going to. Like, I'm going to tell the entire story, all of it. And, um, and all the players involved as well, because not great things happen also as part of it. And from that, a ton of people went and blew up and got their business big, which is awesome. Right. Is, is, a, is what you'd expect from a, from a coaching program. I didn't, there was a lot I didn't understand. I understood how to sell and market and fill a room. There were parts of business itself that I was still very new at and uh, just didn't know, you know, and it was what, four or five years ago now, which feels like an eternity in the internet game. But yeah, um, yeah there was a lot that happened uh, with that. But no, I appreciate you saying that because that, that was a fun, that was a, um, I remember in college, I was always that kid who didn't know what he wanted. You know, I don't know if you guys ever experienced that, but like, oh yeah, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are that way. And you're like, I don't really know what I want to be when I grow up. And um, so I went in as a programmer, except what my dad was. And then, uh, but that same, like, what am I going to be when I grow up thread kind of kept going. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long time to like really get clear on who I'm selling to, where I'm going, how I'm, who I'm serving, what problem I'm solving. And, um, The benefit of that mentality is I got to touch a lot of different backgrounds. You know, e-com got a great model for it. SaaS and software, awesome. You know what I mean? Info, coaching, consultant, B2B, affiliate, network marketing. It's like, it's too much stuff. And then like in 2020, I got a a message from Russell at the beginning of 2020. And (laughs) Russell was like, dude, you got into the offer thing. But under that umbrella, you went wide again. He said, you're too good at too much again. And he's like, don't feel bad about it. You did the same thing I did, but you're too good at too much. Go, you got to go narrow in again. And that, that's hard to do for a lot of us who can pick up skills. Who, who well. has a friend or a mentor 
that has a relationship like that that can just say maybe even unsolicited steve like yo it was unsolicited <laughs> that's crazy but that shows yeah. this relationship that you two have too which is amazing yeah and it's yeah. interesting because you kind of answered the question i was going to ask which is how did you like how did you fall into the thing that felt right for you after kind of dabbling with so many different things and going through that i don't know what i want to be when i grow up do you feel like you yeah. found that and what did it take to get there i would say that i found that in the last six months <laughs> wow but but even then it's continuing to evolve you know yeah. and i think that's just where this road leads um the trick is being able to plant the flag long enough to build something sustainable that really helps people you know otherwise you just look like you're not focused um but uh now, I remember uh, it was around that time, 2020, no, 2018, 2018, I was still going through that question, All right? I was, I was, it's been six years since I worked at ClickFunnels, which is amazing. And um, I had left my job, joined the inner circle, I was talking with Russell at an inner circle thing. And um, I was like, I'm trying to figure out what my purpose is. And he started laughing, like hard, like, and I'm- <laughs> He thought you were making a there, joke. No, he knew what I was asking, but he just, started, oh. he just, he buckled over and started, I mean, <gasps> I mean, laughing. I know him really well. We sat next to each other for a while. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and he really didn't laugh that hard that often. He laughed so hard. And it was like, that's a, that's a painful thing for a lot of us to go through. What am I going to be when I grow up kind of a thing? What's my purpose? That's a very yeah. vulnerable statement. Yeah. I know. And I was like, what so he's, to, what's my purpose? Laughing. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. and he's, so like, he's laughing. Breath why what's 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 the reason is it because he gets it or what well he, after he caught enough breath to speak he lifts his head up and he goes and someone else asked him wait what did he just say and he goes he asked the purpose question and he goes back down, <laughs> just like laughing his face off and they both go down laughing harder holding like the stomachs and i'm like sitting there in this vulnerable <laughs> spot at this little inner circle pot like like holding beef and i'm like <laughs> you know? and, and he, he, he goes dude i was playing this game for 13 years before i found out i was, should be the funnel guy wow so, the guy next to me goes yeah man i'm in my 60s i just found out what i'm supposed to do like six months ago and he looks oh. right at me and he goes he goes you know the answer to this solve people's problems and just serve and you'll it'll be half designed and half discovered i was like sweet oh. so and this like, is a normal thing for entrepreneurs to experience right <laughs> like all the freaking i think time. that's what what was probably so funny for him it's like every single person has is asking themselves that same question and even the people that have been in the game and are successful are probably still asking that yeah it's, it's one of those moments where you know i have certain people that have similar life experiences like if Russell runs into a wrestler or something and is like, oh, he did that move. And then you're like, oh, he did that move, right? Where I have certain people, you know, in, in different channels that I run through that nobody else would understand. Um, and sometimes yeah. you can just look at him and be like, dude, how's it going? And then you both start laughing because you just understand that so completely. I think that is an amazing moment. Plus half discovered, like half by design. That is, that's powerful, that's, Steve. That's my little saying. Yeah, it's like, it's it's half design, half discovered, because I had to somehow answer it and you go become okay with that. Otherwise you swim in the sea of never really like completing a project because you're like, I should do this, I should do this, I should do this. And what solves it is first getting clarity on who you want to serve. Then you build a business around their problems, not around your interests. That's yeah. that that changes everything. Because oh yeah, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. And the reality is entrepreneurs are unnaturally gifted problem solvers and so you can kind of figure anything out and so it's a terrible way to anchor your decisions in life as an entrepreneur from business like you have to instead start with not what should i sell what should i do it's who do i want to serve get real clear on that and then just get to know their problems and that's like that's how i've had to solve it personally <laughs> yeah and and i know you taught this a lot too in ofa and like i said i want to keep kind of moving on to like where you are now, because I think we could spend 20 minutes on people trying to understand where they're at. So two yeah. things that I want to kind of know next is one thing that's always drawn me to you is this identity of the capitalist pig. I think it is so polarizing and so magnetic, right? Like at the same time, how do you balance that identity into the business world and like what you're trying to do now? Maybe you can kind of bridge that gap of like, Hey, this is what I want to do. And here's how capitalist pig fits in. 
And was it yeah, your yeah. plan to do so well in this personal branding or did it just kind of happen? Like, I think that's very Good fascinating question. as well. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, again, half designed, half discovered. I saw a shirt years ago that said just the words capitalist pig on it. And I thought it was hilarious. And I bought Russell and I each one of them while I was still working there. And I wore it one day while doing some coaching. I think it was for One Funnel Away or something. And people were just going nuts. And I was like, it's kind of funny. This is kind of cool, you know? Um, and I didn't really think that much of it. Fast forward like three years later. Um, and um, that's probably two years. I, I started... I started making my own versions of it to just be super polarizing with it. But what I started learning was how this is not a logo, you know, it's not a logo. Russell's worn it. I've seen a lot of Ryan Moran loves it. I've seen a lot of people, a lot of big people wear it. no one would wear the logo of an offer. All right. Got Especially it. big people. And that's, what's so different about this kind of thing. And so I started diving really into the personal branding piece and recognizing that well, I usually I have it like on a whiteboard when I go through this part, but the, how this was designed is we first have to think that the person that we choose to go serve as a company is not a market. This is very different than what college taught me. College would always say the question, who's your target market? Incomplete question, because people are not places. Markets are places, not people. And so what we do is we first design a, a customer this is our dream customer. This is the problems they're experiencing. This is what's going on in their brain. This is the stuff I wanted to go further in and funnel hacking live with Russell, but just came on time, you know? So once we have designed a person, then we start trying to find the place that we find them in. And it's not just Facebook. It's what market are they in? Are they in the smartphone market? Are they in the, right? You start naming markets based on problems, right? And all these companies are around them. Um, and so what I started doing is I was like, well, who's the market that I currently find my customer in? Well, right now, for the six, seven, eight years, gosh, only almost nine, it's been the funnel space. Mm -hmm. And the funnel space is really good at attracting a newer person. Russell's got a weird gift for that, right? <laughs> Salesforce was shocked about that when they were talking about, you know, they were like, how do you get so many like zero to 50 million companies when most of the rest of the consulting world does 50 million and above only you know funnel mm. plan is very unique on bringing brand new people in and i think it's because of russell um i was like okay so if that's who i'm serving let me look five years down the line what market do i want to be finding my customers in in the future mm -hmm. and i want it to be really big and i want it to be the entrepreneurship market just the broad stroke you know where I'm competing with, as much as I love him, Marcus Lemonis, right? People are like, Steve Larson's another Marcus Lemonis, right? You know what I mean? Like that broad stage, not necessarily funnel land, really, really big world stage. Then what I did is I said, what are the conflicting social issues inside of that market? Uh, not rights, opinions. And I was like, what are those things that everyone in entrepreneurship are always fighting in, right? And you can see, go down to funnel land. What is everyone in funnel land fighting over? Webinars are dead. No, they're not. Big one, right? Facebook ads are dead. No, they're not. Whatever, what are the, not rights, social issues within that marketplace. And I was like, I'm going to go, that's a little deep, but like where I usually go is I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to the entrepreneurship market and I'm going to choose one of the most cutthroat, intense arguments that exists since the dawn of man in that marketplace on like capitalism versus socialism. And what's interesting is that when you develop a brand around a, an existing social issue, you enlist an army immediately. You enlist oh, yeah. enemies immediately also, but that's where <laughs> this came from. So it took about five years to really think through and design it, but that's how it happened. It's really brilliant. It is so, it is so genius. And it's so funny as you think about this, like you probably have realized over the last couple of years, like, Oh my gosh, it's really genius. And like, didn't realize and it kind of evolved. And, yeah. and here we are. Well, how, how does that play into, cause here's what we kind of talked about is you said, Hey, I did OFA and what it did is attract a lot of people for offers, did offer mine, it was offers, offers, offers. But I think you've kind of grown from that too. And like, I've, I've seen you working with some of the biggest names in the industry. Like tell us now who your dream customer is and how you're helping them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that question. Um, I became the offer guy after Russell was laughing. 
that whole laughing thing where he's like the purpose thing what happened is like two, two days later he sends me a message he goes by the way if you don't become the offer guy some guy i don't like will so please do uh. <laughs> <laughs> i was like all right it, it, the reason it started That's a quick way to find your purpose russell just tells <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> i was ball and told very quickly but it, it happened because i was doing so much one funnel away into comic book coaching at the time and i walked in from a coaching uh, session four hour q a one day back into my desk you know and he's sitting right there and he goes i've noticed you really like teaching the offer stuff i said yeah he said i'm so glad because i hate that part i was like really I said cool he's like yeah please dive into that more so that's really where it came from what started happening was and I, i'm a grateful for this person who comes to me because of it but when you call yourself the offer guy like who does that attract <laughs> people who don't have offers yeah right yeah. and it's not it's, it's not that it's bad, um, but entrepreneurship is tough. You know, you end up, I call it the five-year-old in the Ferrari. I ever told you this, Chris? I don't know if I've ever told you I don't you think this. so, huh? All right. So imagine this. Uh, someone's like, I got to get from A to B super fast. And I'm like, check it out. I'm going to teach you how to build the coolest car on the planet. It's this Ferrari. And you get in it and you have this Ferrari and you're sitting in it. And all of a sudden you start thinking this car sucks and you look down, your feet can't touch the pedals and you can barely reach it. You can't even look over the steering wheel and you're like, this car sucks. And you're like, it doesn't suck. You're still emotionally a five-year-old. I'm giving you this vehicle, but you're not tall enough to drive it yet. You haven't grown individually to be able to handle it. Just like Russell is not the same dude now as was it was when he hired me. He couldn't handle what Cliff metaphor. Donald's going through now, right? So I was like, yes. don't be a five-year-old in the Ferrari. And what it, it created far too many for my personality to handle situations where it was a lot of five-year-old in the Ferraris call myself the offer guy where suddenly I had to like babysit their emotions. Like what if someone doesn't like me? They already don't get over it. What if yeah. someone gets a hateful comment on mine? Like just mess with it, you know, but I had to become like, we thought in one funnel way I was going to be teaching marketing. I mostly was a mindset guy and I was never planning on doing that, but it was because of the offer thing. And you're so really I, good at it, by the way. Thank the you. mindset stuff like Thank unreal you. yeah Thank you. yeah um so what ended up happening though is that's when i started calling myself the offer launch guy which assumed you already have an offer that wouldn't yeah. attract you <laughs> unless you know that's why my events are called that now um instead of just offer still have to have it but like how do you get the traffic how do you sell it you know um and then from there what I've I've done a lot of consulting and I just don't really talk about it. Um, I should talk about it more. But honestly, my dream customer is someone who has already like the person I get the fastest results for is somebody who has probably already crossed at least 500 grand. They're, They're an innovative entrepreneur. Yeah, they've innovated something, too. I don't like working with someone who is just like trying to sell the next fidget spinner. Yeah. You know? I like to work with the entrepreneur who's solving a legitimate problem that they were experiencing and they have passion for it, but they're so into the product. They don't know why they have to go sell people on it. You know Isn't what I mean? Isn't that the beautiful ah. thing so good. Of, about, about entrepreneurship is, you know, you're serving entrepreneurs, but as an entrepreneur yourself, you get to decide who your market is, who your ideal customer right. is, who yeah. you're serving and why, because it fits your bigger purpose of helping these people really grow. So like there is no right or wrong answer to that. It's what, what do you want to be as an entrepreneur? You get what, to choose. Yeah. What other business would you say? I don't think we're a good fit. You know what I mean? Like somebody comes in and you know, you want to bake them cake. It's like, I'll bake anybody a cake, right? Yeah. Because everybody eats, but there is seriously some times where you work with somebody for a week and you're like, Hey man, this isn't good for you. It's not good for me. And you move on, right? Yeah. It's, it's primarily first and foremost, the mentality thing. You know, if they're like, Steve's going to save me. I always tell my clients, you're Frodo. I'm Gandalf. <laughs> you're going to carry the ring. I'm your oh. guide. I am not here to save you. You'll save yourself. And people always go, God's coming to save me. I was like, he already did. This one's on you. Okay. The financial <laughs> thing is safe. Yes. Okay. Yeah, all right. Come, come on in. This one's on you. You got a financial burden to grow you, but it's the person who thinks the hardship or I don't know what the answer is equals bad. Mm. Not bad. It's it's a path. Growth. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this then kind of uh you're diving, I think, a little bit into, and maybe maybe tell us a little bit more about this, of I've seen you kind of take on fractional like CMO type stuff where you come in 
and you look at a process or whatever, and you actually can do that for a business without them having to hire a super expensive salary position. Mm, super cool. Yeah, it's been um, a kind of a, a stumbled into thing again. I tend to do that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I um, It actually happened the first time with Russell. You know, yeah. a lot of people... People don't know this last year for a couple of months, I went back as a fractional CMO click funnels for a little bit. And, and it was, uh, it was super fun. Um, it was super fun to listen to the visionary, have a vision and then go develop the plan and then kind of, you know, disseminate it out to the team and the project managers to go execute. And I'm like, it's very CMO role. And, um, uh, it's really hard to be an indoor cat once you've been an outdoor cat. So that was the only reason that I oh, left on wow. great terms, but I could only be in there for a couple of months. Analogy. I was like, dude, Russell, I love you so much. I got to go though. I can't, I can't do this. I well, am solo. <laughs> also, I think, I but, think Russell has a lot of resources, right? I think you yeah. and I talked about that too. And I think you finding the people who are the scrappy people who are established, have an offer and want to make this thing really grow is probably your sweet yeah. spot. So maybe that wasn't the dream customer, even though that you and Russell, I mean, gosh, you guys are Friends. Batman and Robin, which is awesome. You know, I'm Batman. So he knows <laughs> just, just so he knows he'll be Robin. I don't want to wear those tights. <laughs> no. Um, uh, so I started doing more fractional CMO work since then where I help it's an entrepreneur who has already sold, but they've sold and there's, they're, I really, it's the Steve Jobs of the world, you know, of the world. It's, it's, the, they're like, I just want to focus on the product, you know, offers got to be great, but there's a lot of broke entrepreneurs and they have a great offer. They want to make the iPhone and you want to figure out how to get it out to the people. Exactly. And I was like, that's really my, that's really my jam is a, I, I call it a market disruption flywheel. And that's really mm. what I go build for yeah. people who's built an innovative product, you know, and that's, I love that client. I got one right now. He builds, um, it's not like all info stuff either. I got one right now. Who's, um, he builds software for companies who build satellites. <laughs> you know really? what I mean? It's not, this isn't like, just like the, the expert space. And I think that's what's so fun is you get into the, um, they are experts, but they're, they're not like entrepreneurs. A lot of times how we would think. So it's so different from, from this world. Okay. I have a, I, yeah. there'll be my last big question, but like, yeah. you know, I'm coming at this from, uh, I have a different perspective. Like I'm just finally getting to have a conversation with you after knowing who you are and who you've been to click funnels and Russell Brunson in this community for so long. And after you've built up so much authority here, coming from your background and learning the things that you did for training funnels for, you know, tickets to events, I'm very curious, and I'm sure a lot of other people are as well, you know, after building that kind of authority and finally kind of digging into who your ideal customer is, what would you say it it took? Like, was it starting to say no? Was it setting better boundaries? Like, what do you think got you to that place where you're like, I think this is it for me? Yeah. Um, amazing question. You know, I... I had to, this is going to get deep. Are we okay to get deep? Yes, please. Deep. Let's do it. Grab a shovel. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Grab a shovel. <laughs> um, I think there's a portion of the path at the beginning where you are taking opportunities that are available to you because you're, you know, you're still trying to figure out what you want. And I think that that's completely appropriate. And you're also in this immersion phase. It's really hard to call your own shot truly when you haven't gone through an immersion phase, if you haven't touched a, like, the majority of the points in your profession. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I had to, um, here we go. All right. We'll pull, I'm pulling back the curtain here. Here we go. Uh, open the commode here. <laughs> so um, when I was going through my divorce, it really jacked with my head. That was like three years ago. And um, I had people starting rumors about me just because they didn't like me. I had mm. people, I mean, literally colluding and meeting together side by side to like try notes on like crazy crap, like stuff that really, really hurt. And it was painful for me because I feel like I have given a lot to this community, like a lot, yeah. like far more than I've ever said. And, and so it, I had to reinvent me like from the ground up. So how, instead of asking the question, what should I be doing? I realized that that is a question that um, a child mindset asks. It is not an adult mindset. Children 
makes statements of am I. Yeah. An adult makes statements of I am. That's totally solid. different way to show up to life. And so instead of saying, what should I be doing? I had to get comfortable and get clear on the answer, asking the question, what do I want to be doing? Yeah. That's totally different. You're not giving away decision-making power anymore. And so I had to, and I, most people do this and we don't realize we're doing it. Right. And, and so I, instead I had to flip it and start saying, what do I actually want? And I was like, you know, who I actually want to work with, who I like working with the most is the customer who already has made something incredible. They've waded through the discomfort of building it. They, they're mentally a little more thick skinned than a lot of others who are kind of newer, no offense, but just yeah. true. And, uh, going blowing them up. That's fun. Cause they yeah. get to stay yeah. in their art. They're more artists than entrepreneurs, you know? Mm. So that's who I, I love I that's so with. powerful. And it, what a powerful place to be, even though I'm sure you like the people who actually come to those conclusions have really gone through some dark trying times. Right. And the mm. fact that you, you basically built yourself, rebuilt yourself from the ground up after all of that, to be in a position where you can say, what do I want? It's a really powerful place to be. And it's hard to know what you want if you don't know what's out there. And so if anyone listening or watching to this now, you're like, I don't know what I want. Then I would really advise that you go into what I just call discovery phase. Um, I did that consciously during college because I didn't know what I wanted. It was another time I did that. And I told people around me and my loved ones, hey, I don't know what I want to be. And I'm supposed to be doing that here in college. So I'm going to give myself license to try a ton of stuff with the total expectation to not follow through. There's too much like everything's finite. If I'm a starter, I must be a finisher. That's garbage, especially for right. a garbage. You don't know what you want if you don't know what's out there. And it also kind of so gives you permission to fail, which is also part of the journey, right? It was one of the reasons I had 34 product failures before one of them took off. I was I got into one thing and I was like, I like the idea of this thing, but I hate the business of running that thing. Mm. And I would start going down the line like that and um, just trying stuff, you know. It's not very I, encouraging for someone who's wanting a short road. <laughs> yeah, it, well, I think this has been so helpful to listeners because people are on all sorts of different um, journeys or they're at different percentages of this path, right? Like of completion. And I'll kind of leave with this because I always ask like, hey, where's the best place to find you? And I'm doing these trainings and stuff for the Two Comic Club X program. I'm doing a lot of this facilitation stuff. And Russell is often talking about, hey, your umbrella brand. And he's like, figuring out what this is, he says, you can even go use your name. So it's been really fun as we've had this to kind of come full circle in this interview is your, where people find you is Steve J. Larson, right? Where it's not Steven Larson or Steve Larson, but you've now created Steve J. Larson. And one, it was because the domain was a little bit cheaper. Maybe you can talk about that for a second. Tell people like what you would want them to do, like, or, or how they find you, that type of stuff. Yeah, there's really two parts of that story. The fast, real really quick part is that the guy who owned stevenlarson.com wanted 20 grand for it. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not paying 20 <laughs> grand for domain. I could buy it for 12 bucks for Steve J. Larson. <laughs> so that, that honestly was why I, that was the main reason why I started saying Steve J. Larson That's just awesome. so it matched the domain name. Yeah. Take that stevelarson.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I, you know, it's funny cause I, um, pretty soon he's going to be asking to buy Steve J. Larson from you. Just wait. <laughs> It was also challenging, though, to say, I know this is going to sound funny, but when I'm talking on camera and I'm introducing myself, what's up? My name is Steve N. Larson. Two N's at the end made it hard to say fast. So Steve Larson yeah. is just easier. But the second reason, um, yeah, I have something to say about that. There, The whole Steven, you know, Steve killed Steven thing was a mistake. I know why mm. I was doing it. I was in some serious pain. Mm. And anytime I would, I'm about to do my 21st event. I built an event studio. I've done a lot of events, spoken on 60 stages, not including mine. I mean, I, I do a lot of speaking. I love it so much. But yeah. what I used to do to get on stage to show up was intense rap, knuckle push-ups, go back to when I was in the army, like really bring, oh, yeah. you know, and I would bring the full out warrior. Oh, and I've been backstage just, and I've seen you do that. Yeah, right. It, it, I did yeah. like mini workouts back there, but now I can just see I was dripping in anxiety and trauma. <laughs> I mean, wow. I had no idea. And so, yeah, Steve's just easier to say. But I'm definitely still Steve Ben. Um, uh, Russell always wants to know what to call me. But I think <laughs> what entrepreneurship does is it is a, it does a great job of 
I, you know what? In fact, um, Robert Kiyosaki talks about this in one of his books. He says, whenever you take the first step, I'm paraphrasing, whenever you take the first step into entrepreneurship, be ready to have character flaws explode in your face. And you have yeah. to deal with them before you can move forward. And um, so for me, there's some serious just identity. Who am I? Crap that I was going through, which I have a lot of you know empathy for for anyone who goes through that. But I putting on a face is cool, but it's also cool when you learn to not have to do that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and it can't be done off oftentimes in six months. Here we are, however many years into this. I mean. Steve, you're an inspiration to a ton of people who are on this same journey. And I want to thank you for that because I see the people who are uplifted. You're the guy who's three, four, five, six chapters ahead that oftentimes has reached down to chapter one or zero, right? And pulled people up. And so in our community, like from ClickFunnels, thank you. You're an absolute stud. If you want to know more about Steve Larson, stevejlarson.com. And then what are your social handles? I actually don't know. <laughs> Perfect. You guys can so find it. Stevejlarson.com is the best. Yep. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love well, it. And thanks for letting us peel back some of those layers and get to know some of the stuff that, you know, is a little bit more challenging to talk about and how you made some of the decisions you did, because I know that we have people from, like Chris said, all different paths. So to be able to share some of that stuff, I'm sure is really helpful for so many people. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's my pleasure. I'm a very open book. It's all one or lost in the head. So matters. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Thanks for being on today, Steve. It was great hey, to have you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you.